It's 41 days until basketball season here on the campus of Tarleton State, so it's only fitting that we venture back onto the hardwood this week here on To The Point. Hello, everyone. I'm Kyle Cruz, and I'll be guiding you through another exciting edition today as we're going to get with one of the youngsters on Misty Wilson's crew, freshman Ayanna Dorsey, fresh out of Birdville and now here in Stephenville. Ayanna, I appreciate you giving me the time today. Of course. So before we get into you and all the stuff going on with your life here at Tarleton and everything, I have to ask about the friends and family back home uh, during COVID-19. Is everything safe and sound on the home front? Um, So far, yes. I mean, there's been a few ups and downs, but I think everybody's had that. Um, But mostly, I'm pretty sure everyone's good. Keeping in touch, so. Glad to hear that. Not too far from home, so a little bit easier adjustment during Mm -hmm. All of this. Um, I call you Ayana. It's just so weird. I don't even really like doing it. Um, we got to kick off with that. Uh, around here, you're Yaya to the women's basketball team, everyone in athletics. Take us inside that. Where'd you get that nickname? Is that here or is that from before here? That was from definitely before here. Um, I was I was training with an ex um, NBA player and he just is probably I would say my freshman year. And out of nowhere, he just said, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I called you that. And then, like, we kind of stuck with it from then on because my dad was like, I like that name. And I was like, I do, too. So then we kind of just stuck with it. And that's my basketball identity. Well, I'll say this. You haven't stepped on the floor yet, but you're definitely a member of the all-name team for sure going in (laughs) here at Tarleton State. Um, One thing that always fascinates me with basketball players is their diet, kind of keeping up with their body and all that. I asked you what your favorite food was. You gave me a really interesting answer. Pickles. (laughs) Pickles. Take me inside that. Have you been into eating pickles since you were little? Is that like a a snack of yours or has it just got to be a garnish on everything? I I just love pickles. Like I will eat it for a meal. I can eat pickles for a meal. I would, and we got to Walmart, I would make her buy the big jar of pickles, or I would not be happy with her. <laughs> Hopefully you've got a supply here in Stephenville. I talked to you a little bit about what you like uh, to watch in the movies, and uh, you brought one that's close to heart for me in my childhood, a big Space Jam fan. Uh, did you watch that a lot growing up? I did. I watched it almost every night before I went to sleep. <laughs> so I got to ask, are you excited about Space Jam 2 coming out with LeBron, or are you a little hesitant because it's not MJ? You gotta, you gotta watch it though, right? I'm gonna give it a shot, but I don't know. Jordan's, you know, he's he's my favorite. He's the best to me. So hey, I love the King, but I'm skeptical too. You know, there are only one Space Jam to me, so we'll have to see when it comes out. Another thing that was very interesting to you about me, or um, that I heard about you, pardon me, Yaya, is you told me you didn't start playing basketball until the eighth grade. That that seems a little late. But but I said you wouldn't be able to tell. It comes so natural to you. Kind of take us through that. How did you get into the game and, you know, where it's gone since then? So, I yes, I did start at a very late age. I was told that a lot. And I was also told, like, I would never be able to really play a little. And if I'm being honest, that's what kind of – that's what – when I started, it was like, okay, I want to play for real. Because people took it as, like, I'm too small – And I wasn't going to be able to play basketball because of my height and because of my size. And my dad had asked me, he was like, if this is something you want to do, then it's all in or you, you don't need to play. And so I took that as I want to be all in and I want to go for it. And he's like, this means training after training, after training, little time for social. And that's pretty much what my whole childhood was. I had a childhood, but it was mostly like my team as my family and being around them 24-7. So when I would wake up, it was practice from practice to games, and it was just back to back. You know they say it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. And you you talk about your dad. He's such a huge influence on that, you know, boxing background. You told me that one of your favorite things to do is to work out with him and to box with him. Talk about that toughness and the relationship with your dad. I feel like that that is a big part of your life. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, me and my dad, we, we've always been super, super close. I'm a daddy's girl. <laughs> um, he has, he's has he been the person who's always been 100% with me. He never sugarcoated anything. Um, I was his little girl, but I was also somebody he knew that when I got into the real world, it was going to be hard. And so he kept it real with me, and he pushed me to my limits and above my limits <laughs> some days. And um, I think the biggest thing it was super stressful sometimes but at the end of the day like I knew he only wanted what was best for me 
So I just kept working and every day he would push me to get better. And he would always tell me, he was like, this is what you chose. It's on you. So that's pretty much where I went with that. I can tell that drive and focus. It's not just on the basketball court. It's the kind of person you are. Um, and I can tell that it's a kind of a central theme, not only on the court, like I said, but in your life. Um, you're listening to Iona Dorsey, uh, one of the newest of Misty Wilson's uh, basketball team here. Iona, we're going to do this or that now. This is a quick segment we do to get inside the minds of our athletes here at Tarleton State. We're going to go fast. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Cookies or cake? Cookies. Chicken or steak? Steak. Cat or dog? Dog. Shoes or flip-flops? Shoes. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Shorts or pants? Shorts. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Summer or winter? Summer. It's a Texas girl right there. Used to it. Uh, love or money? Love. Comedy or horror? Horror. Here's the one I know. LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Morning or night? I'm both, honestly. Okay, you do a little bit of both. Night Owl and an early riser. Uh, the last one is going to be tough for a Texas girl to answer, maybe. The beach or the mountains? Beach. Okay, there you go. You're from DFW. Like we don't get a ton of it in our life, so you got to enjoy it when you have it. Um, we move on from that, Iona. Now to your time here at Tarleton State. And another thing that I find so fascinating about you finding your way here is your recruitment. You know, very highly touted out of Birdville, 25 points per game, a member of the all DFW team. And I talked to Jaron Vieira, one of the new assistants here, who I know you've grown close, grown close with. They told me about when he they had kind of locked in on you and that they said that you were in on Tarleton State, and it just shocked me that you were still available at that time. Take us through your recruitment and kind of what sold you on Tarleton and coming here to spend your collegiate career. Um, so through my recruitment, I struggled a lot. Um, I, had, I had offers, but um, they were either too far from home and because I'm both – I'm close with my mom and my dad, and yeah. I did not want to home um so that was a huge part for me and also I there were a lot of schools that had told me like we don't know if we want to give you a shot like I said before I was so small and I wasn't as muscular as I am now before yeah. you know so it took um it took a lot um I felt like people saw me as somebody who's gonna get pushed around and that's kind of how my recruitment went I was I was moved from team and um, it was it was hard because I saw all the other girls getting recruited and um, it was kind of frustrating at times. But my dad told me, keep faith. And so I feel like that is what helped me. And then um, at the very end, that's when Tarleton gave me a call and I was so excited. And I had, already, I had actually committed to a JUCO because I was going to go JUCO to start off. And then uh, once Tarleton called me, it was like, they always say it's that moment, like you feel like it's the right place. And like when Coach Wilson called me, I was like, there's no way. I was like, this isn't happening. And like, I just knew then, like, that's that's where I wanted to be. It was close to home. And she had told me, Coach Wilson told me, um, I'm never going to yell at you. And that's something new. And I was like, you're never going to yell at me because <laughs> my parents were always on me, like 24-7. And so when she told me that, and I was like, I definitely need to go here. <laughs> Wilson's not going to yell at you. She's going to push you, though, Yaya. I think you're, you're the first one that will advocate for that. We talk about the relationship with your mom. You know, we mentioned your dad earlier on, but you talk mm -hmm. about the relationship you have there, being a drive away from mom here and being able to go home when you need to. Talk about the importance of that. I know because this being your formative years, moving away from home, it's nice yeah. to have that lifeline close. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't think I, I, don't think I could have been away from my parents. Uh, as much as they annoy me, I don't think I could have been away from them. Uh, my mom, she was always somebody I could talk to about anything. And so, like, when you don't have that and, like, you're in a new environment, it's really hard. And so, like, she was somebody I literally talked to about everything. And she had always gave me good ideas, good points. And she just talked me through, like, all the hard things that I've been through. Because, like, I, I get very emotional about the stuff that I've been through. And, like, she was just always that he was like, you can do this. Like, you just need to relax. You just need to focus. And so now that I'm close to them, <clears throat> now that I'm able to stay close to both of my parents, it's like a dream come true. It's 
a good safety net to have. It's transition here into Stephenville. It's a very different place. G- give us your first impressions here of living in Stephenville. I know the girls make the transition a little bit easier, but just talk about living here and kind of what has stood out about living in Stephenville so far. Um, uh, I didn't have to share a room. <laughs> okay. That's got to be a plus. Happy about that. Um, kind of what stood out, I would honestly, I would have to say the teammates. Like, I, that's like really what I, I'd always pictured myself being with a team who was so uplifting and people who were always going to push to be better and help me. And that's what this team is. And I felt like that really stood out to me, especially like when we started practicing. Um, they're not a team who's going to take easy on you just because you're a freshman. Like, they're going to push you, and that's what I needed. So I felt like that stood out to me the most. Nice segue. We can talk about your teammates a little bit now. Uh, first year on campus, like I said, you're extremely close with the ladies here. So I got to ask, uh, the, the funniest teammate you have? Um, Caitlin. Caitlin? Got to ask why. Um, she – the the word she says sometimes it just cracks me up the way she puts it she says like the same thing it's something that nobody else says and it's like she just says it and she doesn't care and she laughs and she laughs about it herself so then it makes me laugh very matter of fact caitlin guillory it's a very good way to put it so we talk about uh dancing and having a good time and whatnot you said it's a tie for first between you and lucy benson so are we just gonna have to have a dance off on the road this year Whoa, that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, if you had to dance, y'all, y'all, what would you dance to? Like, what's the song of choice? A song of choice to yeah, dance to? I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I would do, like, a TikTok mashup. Okay. I, <laughs> just, I like it. Very creative. Uh, I asked you who you would share a deserted island with. And you said, nobody, I want it to myself. But then I made you choose. And you said, Naya, tell me, uh, take it inside that. What makes you think you could tolerate Naya and s- stay on the uh, island with her? Um, we have kind of like a sister a sister relationship. Yep. And I feel, like, um, I feel like we'd both work hard to help each other. And also, like, she's funny, so I can laugh whenever she says. <laughs> There you go. You got to have some sense of humor in your life. Uh, really quick before uh, we wrap up, Missy Wilson is a big part of why you were here on the Tarleton campus. I know you brought her up in the recruitment process and all of that. Kind of take us inside that thought process. She plays such a vital role in the program. She's built it to where it is. Um, and she's the identity of it in a sense. T- take us inside that. What sold you on Misty and playing for her? Um. She was very truthful with me about how she ran the program and um, how she cared for her players. And um, when I was able to talk to all the coaching staff um, and the players, they were telling me just how great of a person she was and um, how she ran her team. And it was always something I I looked into, I looked forward to. Um, she also, she laughed at some of my jokes, so I got happy. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I like her. She's she's cool. <laughs> so then um, I kind of just went with it. Um, I took my chances not knowing everything about her, but everything that I heard was great. And I loved her from the beginning. So she's she's been a huge part of why I came here. And um, I wouldn't change it. No doubt a huge reason why the program is successful it is and has got to the point where it is. Misty Wilson will help transition women's basketball into the Western Athletic Conference here in uh, Division One. Real quick, uh, before we let you go, not to get ahead of things, how's everything going with you on the school side of things? I know it's tough with COVID and everything. Um, I'm sure you're doing there's an online component and everything. Take us through that, kind of how school is going, you're acclimating to the college life and all of that. Um, at the very beginning, I, I struggled a lot for – I would I would say the first month <laughs> of school um, it was it was pretty stressful especially just getting into basketball and um, learning everything in basketball and then trying to go to classes and um, I think my biggest thing was my math class like that was really hard for me um, it was a huge adjustment because I was so used to I did all my work early um, in, in high school and it was super easy. Like I didn't have to, I didn't really have to do anything. Um, and coming from high school to college, it was not the same, completely different. Um, it was a lot of time management. Um, and 
I would have to say a lot of time management and preparing all the work that you need. Also getting books. That was really hard. <laughs> well, you've got a great support su support system here that's going to get you where you need to go. I, I cannot tell you how much I am looking forward to getting to watch you lace it up here pretty quick. Thank you so much for giving me the time today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Also, don't forget to go into the Fan Rewards app today inside the Tarleton Sports app. Once you watch this, go in with the promo code YAYA, Y-A-Y-A, get you 500 points today towards our reward store today for watching um, as Iona Dorsey gets ready to lead Tarleton State women's basketball into the Western Athletic Conference. Until next time on To The Point for Iona Dorsey, this is Kyle Cruz saying so long. Because of this. We made Ford Super Duty the most capable heavy-duty pickup ever. Because of this, we built Ford F-150 with 375 horsepower and best-in-class payload. Because of this, we built Ford Ranger with the terrain management system. And because Ford trucks are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand.